All right, hello everyone. I've made another scene in Unreal Engine. Here's what happened this week. So the whole point in this week's render is to update the channel's banner and profile picture. I made them in Photoshop when the channel started and I don't really know what I was going for with these designs, but I definitely couldn't do anything like this. So I'd say it's definitely time for an upgrade. Since this is going to be the new banner of the channel and I'll be seeing it quite a bit, I'm going to start things off with a sketch. This way I know I've got something worth pursuing instead of just kind of winging it like I'm often tempted to do. But having a sketch and a proper plan makes the whole process a lot easier. You'll see how I use the sketch as reference throughout the duration of the process to focus on specific areas of the scene. I was also inclined to make the sketch to make sure the composition would actually work as a YouTube banner. Here's the banner template. And as you can see, on most devices, we only have a very thin part of the composition to work with in the middle. So we'll be rendering an image at full scale, but keeping most of the detail work to this cropped area. As you can see, I've overlaid that banner template over the sketch to make sure everything is staying in line. Cue the music. For anyone curious, this is all being done in the program Procreate, and I'm sketching using one of their default technical pencil brushes. I like that this brush has a lot of tooth to it because it really does feel like paper, which kind of helps me get ideas out faster for some reason. I think it could be all those years doodling and notebooks coming through. Going into this sketch, I had a pretty clear mental picture of this guy sitting in the deck chair next to an umbrella, looking over some sort of scene. But that was the trick, I did not know what the scene was going to be. So a large part of the sketch process was just trying to figure out how I wanted to fill the environment. But anyways, this is kind of the direction we ended up choosing, so here is that final sketch. This drawing is going to act as a great plan for designing the render, like a simple blueprint, and I won't be completely making it up and descending into guesswork as we go forward. So now we move on to gathering some assets. Thanks to Epic Games and their copious amounts of Fortnite money, we have access to the Megascans library for free, which I use for pretty much every project. In this one, we'll be using these assets here. We'll use these to build out the environment with all of their photo scan detail thanks to the wizardry of Nanite. There's no other way my laptop could handle such quality set pieces. So now we're going to look through Sketchfab, TurboSquid, and CG Trader to find the rest of the props. And here they are. With a bit of tweaking, each of these should work great. I'll link everything I use down in the description. And now all that's left to do before we assemble the scene is to pose some characters. So let's get that done real quick. Character posing was all done in Cascadeur, a new 3D animation program that uses AI auto-posing. Using this, we drop in a Mixmo character, and if you want to see how this is done, be sure to check out my video on animating a first-person horror shot. We then use our drawing as reference and get to posing this guy. Since I'm not worried about the animations, this is pretty straightforward. Quick note for when you're making use of auto-pose, by pressing Shift-Z, you can lock points in a direction. This keeps your character from turning in a way that you don't want. While trying to figure this out, I hit Shift-V by mistake, and uh, I thought I broke the whole project. What have I done? I just, I just made him dis- uh, Shift-V. Alt-V. Alt I fixed it. <laughs> So that's our first character all posed and ready, and now we move on to the second one who's submerged under the sand. For this character, it's just the default Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. While 
While I'm in the process of posing here, I'd like to mention that this video is sponsored by Wingfox. Since last time we've talked about this course, it's received a plethora of updates to help teach you how to make your own first-person shooter game in Unreal Engine 5. The course is now packed with over 6 hours of valuable and in-depth tutorials spread over 60 digestible lessons. It can be hard to find quality, specific resources and workflows when learning Unreal Engine, and Wingfox helps bridge that gap. If you want to support the channel and check out this course, use my link in the description to save on your order. Currently there's a sale going on in which the course is 51% off. Using that link in the description, check it out while it's on sale and with special code BFCM save big. Alright, finishing up the posing process by getting the fingers into position, we can then move on to our actual environment design. Kicking things off for a fast lighting setup, I'm using Dynamic Volumetric Sky, which is quickly ascending to one of my favorite packs. I then placed down a camera so I know where a shot is going to be, and then got to laying down some assets, beginning with some Megascans Coastal Cliff Rocks as a foreground. Everything in the scene happens to be at around half scale, which in combination with our camera settings makes the scene have a sort of miniature feel to it. Here you can see me manually select the focus distance under the camera settings. It's little details like this that make the scene feel extra cinematic. The composition here also features a portal effect, which I figured out how to make in last week's video. I'll try and remember to link that as well. This is all in the same project, so I was just using the same setup. But then I ran into my first significant issue. Fall. Oh, what? Whoa, why? What happened? That really sucks. It was a pretty bad crash. I had not hit save in a while. So, uh, starting over... <clears throat> I placed about three assets into the scene and... Fall. What? Why is this happening? So yeah, third time around, I hit the save button like my life depended on it. Adding in the foreground props after those first few crashes was pretty straightforward thanks to our reference sketch. There's not much to say about this part of the process, so moving on to the background, it's only made up of a few large assets, which thanks to the out of focus camera work, pretty well fill out the environment. By setting up the shot and focus settings early, you don't have to worry about filling in every bit of detail. It's crucial if you want to get things done quickly. The scene wouldn't really work if it was an actual like game environment, but for the sake of this shot, it's perfect. Next up for the background, I import our second character pose and set the scale to some ridiculous number as it's submerged under the sand. I then added another mountain asset behind him as a giant headrest. We're on to the last few details now. To make the pyramids, I opened up the modeling tools and created a cylinder with only four vertical slices, and then positioned them based on the sketch. You'll see me here get pretty hypnotized by how the global illumination and volumetrics work together to cause these super dramatic shafts of light when I move the pyramids up and down. Unreal Engine continues to feel like magic.
At this point I applied materials to our background elements, and after that it's the typical finishing touches, adding some cinematic camera shake and a little bit of movement and rotation to the floating pyramids. And we've got a render this week. So there it is, we made it. Another week and another render. And of course, here's the grand unveiling of the new banner. So that's that. If you're still here at the end of the video, I appreciate you sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video and found some inspiration. If you did, be sure to leave a like and maybe even subscribe. That's all I've got. I'll see you guys in the next one.